I would even say that the number one co underlying cause for POTS is blood sugar fluctuations. Can we talk about exactly what is POTS? Well, what is it? I mean, and all of you listening out there start to think about this and checklist it in your head and start writing in the comment section. How many of you have an autoimmune diagnosis, or you may not even have an autoimmune diagnosis, but you have tons of symptoms, but you got symptoms of dizziness, vertigo, um, fast heart rate, blood pressure drops, sometimes nausea. And when you get up, you feel like you're dizzy and it happens all the time. And I'm going to tell you something. How many of you out there get car sick or seasick really easily? Did you know that's actually linked to people who have POTS? Do you know certain people with autoimmunity are really prone to that? And that it's linked for your predisposition or your likelihood for having POTS. That is fascinating. Well, you don't hear that anywhere. I don't think you can hear that enough. Car sickness could be a warning sign or a symptom of POTS. That is correct. And we will go into it. But I want to know right now in the audience, how many people, based on the list of symptoms that I've talked about, already know that you have some of those symptoms? Already have been trying to tell your doctors you've had those symptoms. And how many of you now are for the first time light bulb moments like, oh my God, it's linked to my other issues with autoimmunity. And I'm curious too, how does blood sugar play into all of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christina, did you learn anything about your blood sugar? Osteoporosis diet is terrible for blood sugar. It's nothing but simple carbs. And Dr. Maggie's program just really, the main program helped me learn how I could still manage my blood sugar while my gut was still healing. Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power pack 30 minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of transform. Go ahead, click the link and I'll see you in that training. Think about this. How many of you now are starting to realize digestion was huge for you, is huge for you in POTS most likely? How many of you starting to realize, oh my God, maybe it's food sensitivities that's going on. And number three right now, I'm going to explain why blood sugar is like holy grail for POTS. In fact, I would even say that the number one underlying cause for POTS is blood sugar fluctuations. People with autoimmune disease are super sensitive to high and low blood sugar. And yet there's a lot of autoimmune reasons why they're really prone to high and then low, high and then low. Think about it. Every time your blood sugar goes low, what happens to blood pressure? Does a swing high, low, high, low as well? What happens when that happens? These swings in high, low blood sugar also can cause your heart to go into fast, low, fast, low. So did you guys know that your POTS symptoms that's going on all the time is not random? These are not random acts of health violence. It's actually specifically fueled by the fluctuating blood sugar levels that's going on because you don't got blood sugar mastery down at all. And a lot of these diets that people get put on autoimmune disease in the hospital or by your specialist or nutritionist is all this carb or blend diet or whatever that causes your blood sugar to go really high. And then your body will send insulin, bringing it super low. Boom, more pot symptoms right there. Boom, more gastroparesis right there. And Renell is saying digestion was a huge issue for her. I mean, Dana, how, how was blood sugar an issue for you? Blood sugar was the number one cause for my POT symptoms, 100%. That was the biggest game changer for me, I think even more so than digestion. Mm -hmm. um, and even just thinking about what I would do to help with my POTS. You know, we mm -hmm. talked a lot about how salt is kind of, you know, the number one suggestion of just like, just increase your salt intake. And I would do that whenever I feel like I was having my POTS symptoms, I would usually go and turn towards my holy bag of corn chips that I would then pour more salt on. But all that is, is just carbohydrates. And as you learn in the program, if you don't have a balanced meal or you're balancing out your carbs with fats and protein, okay. it's going to cause you to have huge spikes in blood sugar and then drops in it. So what I thought was helping my POTS would only help it temporarily and actually give me a way worse swing of POTS within the next two or three hours. Yes. Winner, winner, was, chicken dinner. Even your doctor who specialized in diagnosing you with POTS wasn't filling you in on this. Did he, did he or she? I don't know this. Go yeah. ahead. It, not didn't talk to you about blood sugar though. Did no. anybody working with you on POTS give you dietary advice about food mapping, about digestion, or about blood sugar? Drink Gatorade and eat salt. Yeah, Pedialyte was my recommendation. <laughs>
I'm a fan of the Kirsty words. I almost guessed right there. Sorry. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's maddening to me that this isn't happening out there. And so many of your lives out there who are watching right now is ruined by these symptoms of POTS. Really what's needed to happen is education, training, and accurate data here. That's what's going on here. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in actively looking for a solution to your problem and you'd like to work with us, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and click the link in the description to book a chat with our team. I and my team look forward to talking to you to learn more about you to see if we are indeed a good fit to work together. Thank you.